Interstellar is one of the greatest films of all time, and no other movie will ever come close. Here's why. Interstellar is set in 2067, following the aftermath of a global famine. The movie follows Joseph Cooper, a pilot turned farmer. But this movie isn't an action film, and if anything, it's more of a chick flick, to be honest, as this film, while having action, and while being set in space, has a main theme of love. Not a romantic one, but the love between Cooper and his children, and more importantly, his daughter Murph, and the connection they share despite being light years away from each other. Cooper, being one of the few pilots left on Earth, is chosen by NASA to leave Earth in search of a new world to restart humanity and save countless generations to come. I've drafted many versions of this script, and my biggest problem in all of them is that the script was just too long, because there is simply a lot to talk about in Interstellar. As this movie is incredibly complex, it has a long runtime, and has thousands of little details to point out. Interstellar has some of the greatest cinematography of all time, and it's no wonder why it does, as the incredibly talented Christopher Nolan, who made The Dark Knight and Inception, along with many other incredible films, also made this film. It's incredible to see the landscape shots go from dull and barren shots of the dying earth to stunning and fantastic visual effects of space and planets. Not only does this film have incredible cinematography, but it also boasts an incredibly talented cast, with Matthew McConaughey leading as Joseph Cooper, and Anne Hathaway, Jessica Chastain, and Mackenzie Foy. This cast is able to pull off some of the most realistic acting and the most heartbreaking performances, especially from Matthew McConaughey. The characters in this movie are all fleshed out amazingly, with their own motivations and personalities, which lead to heartbreaking deaths as the crew of scientists that go with Cooper slowly get killed off by the rough and treacherous journey. Cooper is a fantastic character as his time in deep space faces him with challenges he never thought he would have to go through. As I said in the intro, this film may have great cinematography, it may have a talented cast, but at its heart, its purpose is the story of love between a father and a daughter. A father's worst fear comes true for Cooper in only 12 minutes. During his time in space, Cooper needs to go down to the surface of a planet in search of a new Earth. But this planet is positioned close to a black hole, so close that time is altered. After landing on the planet, things go terribly wrong, resulting in them being stuck on the planet much longer than planned. When he returns, he's told this. How many years? By now it must be. It's 23 years, four months, eight days. Cooper is silent. He worries not about what happened or the important information he has to offer. He only cares about his children and he rushes to the video messages that his children left. Cooper watches as years of his life go by in seconds, seeing his son grow up, meet his wife, have a child, and hearing of Cooper's own father passing. But Cooper is devastated as he realizes his daughter Murph didn't record any messages. Murph had held on to a hatred of her father ever since he left her and refused to ever talk to him. As one last message plays, a message from Murph. Hey dad. Hey Murph. I never made one of these when you were still responding because I was so mad at you for leaving. You once told me that when you came back we might be the same age. And today I'm the age you were when you left. This might be a real good time for you to come back. Cooper and Murph both know that what he did was the only option, but they both wish they could turn back the clock. As Murph lives her life without her father, Cooper's life flashes before his eyes, realizing all the incredible moments of his children's lives that he'll never get to see. Cooper gives the ultimate sacrifice anyone could ever give. Time. Time with his daughter, time with his son, time with his father, time with his grandchildren, time that he gave up so that his children and their children's children could live a full life. Even in the final scene of the film, when Cooper finally returns home after a journey that left only a mere few years on his own life, he still doesn't win. He returns home as his daughter is on her deathbed and they share just a few moments with each other. Murph tells her father that no parent should ever have to watch their child die and tells him to leave, as she has her children there for her. Cooper loses everything. Of course, Cooper still gets to live the rest of his years, and he still succeeded in the mission, 
but the real mission was always going to end in Cooper giving the ultimate sacrifice. My brother said that Interstellar was too long, which made it unenjoyable, which is fair. Interstellar is a very long and kind of slow movie, but it's the same as reading a long book series. You need to invest time into it, and if you choose to, you get connected to the characters, you get involved in the story, and the story becomes a part of you. Which is why I love Interstellar. Every time I watch it, I notice something different. I still get emotional, I still get excited, and I'm always blown away by the beautiful ending. It shows us just how far a father would go for his children. It's a deeper love that anyone could ever imagine. A love that is perfectly encapsulated in Joseph Cooper as he trades the time he would have had with his children for his children to get that time with theirs. Interstellar is long, but a message this complex shouldn't be crapped out in an hour and a half and advertised as an action movie. Because Interstellar isn't the greatest action movie of all time, in reality, it's the most powerful love story ever told. So. Is Interstellar the greatest film of all time? In my opinion, yes. While many other films such as Lord of the Rings or Avengers Endgame or any Star Wars movie that you could pluck out could be seen as better, Interstellar accomplished such a deep and meaningful topic over the course of only one film and accomplished more in two and a half hours than any other film. Interstellar is a standalone film and thankfully was never tarnished by a trilogy of movies because Interstellar doesn't need a sequel. The story has already been told, the story of a father and his love for his children. And this is why I think that Interstellar is the greatest film of all time. And nothing will ever come close.